Hey guys, about a month ago I was on grayscalegorilla.com and I was checking out this tutorial by David and he was making these really cool swirly patterns with X particles on objects. And uh, I really love the way it looks, it's a super cool effect, but I don't have X particles. So before, it wasn't really possible. But I spent about the last month off and on trying to find a way to do it with thinking particles and I found a solution and it works very similarly. It's a little bit more work to set up only because it's all the nodes and it's thinking particles so it's not so drag and drop but it's doable and it looks pretty awesome. So let's hop on in and check it out. So here we are in cinema and this is what we're making. It's our sphere. It had the particles emitted on it, and it um, moved the particles around with curl noise, and then we clamped those particles to the surface so they don't leave, and then we traced it with the MoGraph tracer object. So let's build it. So the first thing we're gonna need is our surface. We're gonna use a sphere, and thinking particles needs polygon objects. Can't use parametric objects, so we have to make this edible. Let's see on the keyboard. The next thing we're going to need is a null to put our Expresso tag on it. So I'm just going to rename it Expresso. I'll right click, Cinema 4D Tags, Expresso Tag. And here we are. And we'll be down our Matter Waves node. The Matter Waves node emits particles from the surface of an object, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to jump into the attributes of our Matter, matter Waves node here. The object we're going to emit from is the sphere. The birth type, we're going to change to shot. And shot, what it does is it emits a number of particles each frame. We're going to set it to 100, 100 particles a frame. And the life of the particles is going to be 30 seconds because it's how long our timeline is. The speed is going to be zero because we want to emit the particles and we want them to just sit on the surface. We don't want them to move. So there we go. And we'll get particles. There they are. It's beautiful. I'm going to hide the sphere object because we don't need to see it. We just want to see the particles. Now our next thing that we need to do is we need to tell it... <coughs> excuse me. Mm, just had to get a drink. We need to tell it we do not want to emit particles every frame. So we're going to get a time node. We're going to get a compare node. Lay those bad boys down. We're going to get the frame output time. And frames here, we're going to put it into input one. And then the compare node, we're going to tell it if the frame is less than or equal to zero, then the matter waves node can be on. Basically, just leave zero for it to emit on. So there we go. We have frames on zero. Or I mean particles on frame zero. Now, we need to move our particles now that they've been emitted. So, there's actually... We want to move them with curl noise. And Cinema 4D doesn't have like a curl noise node in it. But luckily, I did some digging and found that someone has written one in Python, and they give it away for free at this website here, in their GitHub. So I will give you a link to get that in the description of this video. I already have it downloaded here and installed, so I'm going to drag in the curl noise. Here it is. This is how I get it. It's got its little attributes here. So really quick, why don't we type in some attributes that we I know are going to look good. So I'm going to do a speed of 0.2, a frequency of 10. And the curl noise, it needs the position of the particle, and it outputs the new position of the particle. So to do that, we need to iterate through every particle in our scene, which is done with a p-pass node. And this gives us every particle. We need to get every particle's position, so we need a get data node get data so it takes in the particle and outputs whatever data you want you want position here so we're going to pipe that into position and the curl noise is going to do its thing and then we need to output its new position back into the particle 
which is p set data. And that also needs the particle we're working on from p pass. And then we take the output of curl noise and put it into the position for. So there we go. Now our particles should fly around with some curl noise. That looks pretty good. Floating around like little, little magical fairies or something. All right. Now, the, the moment we've all been waiting for here is how to clamp these things to the surface of this sphere. And that is done. It's very magical. Dynamics proximity node. The dynamics proximity node um, is used for dynamic simulations and we can use it to get the closest point on the surface of our object. But to use the node, we need to have a dynamic object. To do that in cinema, we just need to put a simulation collider body tag on our sphere so that it's dynamic now. All right, so we need to give dynamics proximity a point that we need to compare to, which we will do again with get data. I'm gonna command, click and drag just to copy that get data. Well, actually, I guess we didn't, we don't need to do that. We can just pipe it in here from that guy. And then we need to set this data back now that it's been it's been changed. So we're going to need a set data. And now I'm going to command click and drag the set data because I can't overwrite what we were doing up here with the curl noise. So we're going to put the position into the position port. We're going to give it the particle again. So there's the particle. Now the dynamics proximity, we need to tell it what object we're, we're doing this for. So let's click and drag in our sphere here. And its mode is going to be shape. And those other two modes are used for dynamic simulations and they can make the dynamic simulations run faster, but shape is what we want. So now we should get a particle clamped to the surface of our object. Not work. And that is because get data only outputs once. So we need to copy that guy back over. Tried to make a shortcut and uh, it came back to bite me. It's not what we want. There we go. So now we're clamped to our sphere's surface, but it's doing something weird. Like flashing our particles and then either moving them all into the same position or getting rid of them. I don't know what it's doing, but the reason that is, is because it does not like moving the particle on the same frame that it was born. So. We need to tell it only to do these two commands if, if uh, we're not on frame zero, because that's when we're, we're birthing our particles, right? So to do that, we need to turn these off on frame zero. And you could just animate that, but we're in Expresso, so why not pull them back in here by clicking and dragging on their icon in the Attributes Manager so that we get the actual object itself and comparing them to our frame node like we did for the emitter. So we're gonna need a new comparison node because it's not the same comparison. We can still use the same frame node. So we pipe in frame and we say if frame is greater than zero, enable these two objects, a curl noise and a dynamics proximity. And there we go, that solved our problem. Now we have particles jamming around a sphere, which is super, super cool. So let's extend this to 30 seconds so we can, we can watch it for longer. That's our particle life anyways. So there they go. Look at that glory. And let's trace them so we can see where they're moving around. We'll get a move graph, trace our object, and we will put in our particle group so that it traces our particles. Oh, I should have left that open because actually let's turn off our particles. We don't want to see them anymore. Let's just see the lines that it draws. Super cool. Let's crank up our particle count. 
to get more. More is always better. It's not necessarily true, but it is in particles. There we go. Oh yeah. We got our sphere. It's dialing in with that noise. Beautiful. And this works, of course, with anything. So if I wanted to replace that sphere with like a capsule or something else, all I would have to do is make it editable, drag the tag on there, replace it in a couple places in here, the matter waves and the dynamics proximity nodes. And now, delete our, delete our sphere. We can hide our capsule we will get the same thing, but in a capsule shape, which is super cool. So, I hope you enjoyed that. You can take it from here and put a hair tag on it, render it out, just like David did. David actually shows you how to do that in the end of his tutorial, so I'm not gonna go through that. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for watching.